The collection of Karnak temples are considered a rich historical record for the Egyptian history and civilization, starting from the Middle Kingdom and ending by the Ptolemaic rule. This period covers almost 2,000 years. There are many gods worshipped here in the temple over these 60 acres of land, including God Amun, who owns the Grand Temple, God Smith, God Honso, God Monto, God Osiris, and God Ebet. It has got eight entrances that joins parts of the temples together, but the gate in the middle, in the middle of the first pylon, is the main entrance to the temple. The colonnade of Karnak Temple is the biggest in the world and the greatest building ever constructed for a religious purpose. It's 52 meters in length and 103 meters wide, which means that if compared to other relative buildings, it's 7,000 square feet less than Westminster Cathedral and 10,000 square feet smaller than the Notre Dame of Paris. The colony is associated with massive, astonishingly miraculous numbers in the world of constructions, for it comprises 134 giant sandstone columns divided into two sections. The first one is in the middle, where two main rows of papyrus columns, 22.4 meters high, bear apexes, which by turn bear the massive blocks of the ceiling. The diameter of each reaches 3 meters and a half, and its perimeter is more than 10 meters. The height of just the capital is 3.5 meters, and its diameter at the top is 5.5 meters. These two rows were constructed by King Amun Hotep III, who had built the third pavilion of the temple at the rear of the colony. King Seti I constructed the rest of the columns in the colonnade. That's not a statement to be taken lightly when we know that they are 122 in number. They are built in 14 rows, 7 on each side of the hole. The height of each column is 14.74 meters, with a diameter of 8 meters, matching the 8 meters difference in height between the side columns and the two rows in the middle. This gap was occupied by windows made of stone, in a highly elegant shape. The openings were designed accurately to allow beams of light to penetrate through it and enlighten the procession of the sacred bark of God Amon, the sun god, which used to pass through the middle of the colonnade on its way out to the port of the temple. The apex of each column weighs between 60 and 70 tons. One would wonder how the Egyptians built such giant structures. Such a question gave way for strange comic assumptions of an alien's interference. But the simple truth is, it was the geniosity of the ancient Egyptian engineers and the strong will of the builders. After building the base of the columns, walls of scaffoldings of mud bricks were built around them, wide enough to act as bridges for pulling the stones up. The higher the columns got, the higher the scaffoldings went, until the constructions were finished. Le Grand followed the same way in the same location in October 1899 to erect 11 falling columns and restoring the ones which were about to fall down. So uh, today we have with us here in Egypt a guest from Australia. Please introduce yourself. Yeah, Jeremy from Brisbane, Australia. Yeah. So what do you do back home? So I work in hypnotherapy, helping people with their health type issues. Yeah. Okay, so what about your trip to Egypt? Is there any special story about it? 
Yeah, um, about five months ago I actually had a vision in the night to come to Egypt. A couple of Egyptian faces came to me and, and said uh, all will be revealed in Egypt and I, I thought I definitely need to, to make the journey and discover what Egypt has to offer for me. Yeah. Oh, what a special experience for Joan here. Yeah, um, I, know, I know only a little about Egypt so far but I'm looking forward to it uh, very much, yeah. Alright, so uh, what do you know so far about Egypt? Are they monuments or...? Um, obviously, obviously the pyramids and just how vast they are and to actually get up close, get inside them, just that in itself is going to be amazing. But also um, spending time in the Great White Desert, um, sleeping under the stars and just having that total vastness and having that full experience as well. Alright, so uh, he's going to the desert for the first time of his life, right? Yeah, that's right. And spending that night underneath the stars, it's going to be an yeah, uh, amazing experience. Yeah. Sleeping under millions of stars. Yes, millions and millions. And, yeah. What about any archaeological sites in Egypt? Is there any place special for you? Something you're looking forward to see? Um, I haven't actually looked into it too much, to be honest. They're kind of the main two things I'm looking, to, uh, I'm looking forward to, as well as spending time on the Nile River as well. Yeah, they're, they're really the main things I've uh, looked at so far. All right, thanks a lot, Jeremy, for your uh, time with us here. Yeah, absolutely, I'm uh, happy. Okay, hopefully see you again in Egypt. Yeah, it will do. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. King Seti I called the colonnade, the temple of Seti, the one beloved of Petah, the helpful in that Amon. It seems that the reliefs of the hall weren't finished during the time of Seti I and were completed by his son and successor, King Ramses II. The reliefs in the northern half belong to King Seti, and the southern half, the reliefs of Ramses II, who's represented releasing incense in front of Amun's bark, which is lifted up on the shoulders of priests wearing the masks of the spirits of Botu and Nechen, the falcons and the jackals. He has also recorded his name on the northern and southern entrances of the colonnade. As for City First, he performs his religious rituals, kneeling under the sacred tree of the millions of years of Heliopolis, while God taught writes his name on its leaves. The colonnade was totally colored, basically in the three main colors of red, orange and blue over a white background. Some of these colors remained to keep impressing the visitors of Karnak and imprint a fabulous eternal vision in their minds about the glory and the greatness of the ancient Egyptian progressed minds and architecture. The colonnade is a historical record of the victorious battles of King Seti I and his son Ramesses II in a series of giant reliefs. According to the chronological order, the ones of Seti I were carved first. They start with the king in Palestine establishing his power while Palestinians flee to the Canana fortress to hide in it. Then he is in Lebanon where the native